Kristen Soltis Anderson is a vice president of the Republican polling firm, The Winston Group. She joins me now with a couple of numbers to help us better understand public opinion when it comes to a possible use of force in Syria. Now, Kristen, I should uh, preface this by saying you had a blog post that we will link to where that has a hundred reasons. We're not going to go through all hundred. Uh, I want to pick out a few. The first one is this number. It is 36. That's a number in a new Washington Post poll of Americans who support action in Syria even after President Assad has used chemical weapons. That number is actually down. Uh, it's trending downward. Explain. It's down big time. In December, uh, ABC Washington Post poll showed that 63% of respondents said that if chemical weapons were used by the Syrian government against the Syrian people, that they would support military action in that instance. So 63 to 36 is a really big drop. And I think that's because moving from the abstract to reality um, is a big move. All of a sudden, it's not this, this vague idea of we should, we should go after the bad guys. It's we're talking about really spending blood and treasure on this mission, and is it worth it? Will it achieve the objectives that we want? Now, you mentioned treasure, and, and this is another number that jumped out at me in your blog post. $1.1 billion is the estimated cost of the U.S. strike on Libya in 2011, according to the Congressional Research Service. Now, we don't know how much Syria could cost, but let's talk about the public appetite, as shown through pu public opinion polling, for that sort of expenditure on this sort of military intervention. So the fiscal issues are definitely playing a role here. The number one issue is jobs in the economy, but secondary to that is the federal debt, deficit, spending. Foreign policy is way down on that list. And so when you think about, you know, are we going to spend a billion dollars um, on an overseas mission, the bar is set very high for policymakers who want to ask voters, do you think this is a good expenditure of your tax dollars? Now, truthfully, a billion dollars is sort of a drop in the bucket for when you look at the full federal budget, but it sounds like a lot, and it's it's the spending that's a higher priority to voters at and this point. I want to touch, uh, in closing, I want to touch on that last point you made about foreign policy, and it's sort of down in the, it's a back of the mind issue at most. If you are President Obama looking at poll numbers like are out there, what do you do to try to change public opinion that at least at the moment suggests people are more opposed to a strike than for it if most people aren't even that engaged in it? So I think people need to feel a sense of investment in what's going on rather than it's something bad that's happening to people on the other side of the world and it has no bearing on my life. He needs to make the connection between what U.S. military action might achieve and real outcomes in people's day-to-day -day lives. I mean, we've had unemployment that's been over 7% for an extremely long time, and that's why these economic issues, these domestic issues are front and center. It's going to take a very compelling reason to put foreign policy back in the center. In a way, that's sort of nothing new under the sun. The, the message always with politicians, you have to figure a way to connect fill-in-the-blank issue to regular people's mm -hmm. lives. Kristen Soltis Anderson, now that was two of Kristen's 100 facts and figures about public opinion in Syria that she posts on her blog. Now, I'm going to post a link on my Twitter feed with the hashtag in play to the full list so you can spend your afternoon, evening, morning, whenever you'd like reading Kristen's blog post.